J.D. Irving is a family business that has seen tremendous amount of growth. And we've been pursuing a vision of a GIS that connects the diversity of who we are as an enterprise. Our story begins in 1882 in a small town in Atlantic Canada. And over the last 136 years, the family business has grown and diversified, built on a vision of focusing on the long term. Today, JDI is a vertically integrated network of 50 businesses spanning from forest products to transportation, construction and shipbuilding, and retail and agriculture and food, with over 15,000 employees across Canada and the US. Forestry has always been a big part of what we do. In 1957, we planted our first tree. And just like our heritage as pioneers of tree planting, we were also early adopters of GIS. Starting that journey in 1984, we've really come a long ways with it. Initially, we used GIS as a, as a system of record to describe the six million acres of lands we manage. But GIS grew alongside of our businesses, from the early days of using paper maps to a digital GIS platform. And over the last few years, LiDAR technology has radically changed the way we see our forest. Gone are the days of using big averages to describe the complex natural systems where we work. Today, we have a hyper-accurate scan of our forest revealing new opportunities to propel decision-making. So let's have a look at our vertical integration. It starts with the seedlings we grow in our nurseries to ensure a future for generations to come, to planting them in the field, to sustainable harvesting, to lumber sold from Maine to Miami, corrugated medium for boxes, pulp products, paper, and finally, we sell a full suite of tissue products across North America. And what's really neat and challenging about that vertical integration is the supply chain. This web that connects the forest to the mills and to our customers through complex spatial connections. So over the last few years, we've been investing in precision forestry which for us means taking that LiDAR scan of the forest and transforming the inner workings of our supply chain processes. So let's go behind the scenes to take a closer look. As we acquired wall-to-wall -wall LiDAR, we realized early on that we needed a novel way to really organize this data. It's big spatial data. So we did this using modeling and random forest algorithms and the statistical package R to organize our data on 20 meter grid cells, all totaling 200 million grids. Here, Heather is going to show you some of the outputs of our new precision inventory, like how much volume is standing in the forest, the percent of live crown on the trees, and we've even been able to map how deep the water table is below the surface of the land through an algorithm using LiDAR and other layers. And this helps us better protect the waterways and wet areas in our operations. We've also been able to geo-enrich our 20-meter cells using historic data, like the huge diversity of tree species in our forest and the history of forest management on the land base. Having that new precision inventory was a really big deal for our foresters. However, real transformation came when we were able to take location intelligence to automate their complex decisions, like doing the right type of harvesting at the right time in the right place while meeting the demands for our variety of products in our supply chain. Here we see how we can identify candidate areas at the 20 meter cell level for commercial thinning, which is a harvesting treatment we do to make sure the trees continue to grow and remain healthy. Once we identify candidate cells, we can prioritize them 
based on a set of business rules, and use density-based clustering to design contiguous blocks. Then we remove any lands we had set aside for conservation, and then we can summarize that data to tell us the volume of logs, studwood, and pulpwood we can expect to harvest and deliver to our mills. This is strategy-led transformation for us, always focusing on the long term. Let's move out into the field, where we're taking advantage of the offline capabilities of Explorer, putting the power of GIS and precision forestry into the hands of our foresters. They're excited to have all of our data at their fingertips, even in remote locations, without cell coverage, and definitely no Wi-Fi. Zooming into the area we just planned, we can ground truth it. For instance, if I'm in the field and I see a bird's nest that we want to protect, I can note it so the plan can be modified. Once I'm back in connected, we can share this information back to the office. Once the office and field planning are complete, the digital workflow passes to the operations. Use location tracking capabilities to monitor where our fleet of harvesters are operating. With 189 machines operating 24 hours a day, it's important to keep track of everyone. Once harvesting is complete, we use the tracking data to capture treated areas and update our forest inventory. This prepares us for the next step, replanting. Quality is an important part of our planting program. Using Collector's new offline workflows, we can equip our auditors with multiple areas that have been pre-planned in the office. Let's look at one already downloaded to the device. These managed areas include vector tile base map and operational data. Our auditors collect data and provide feedback to the planting crew. We can also prepare offline data using the app by simply selecting the location and downloading it. It takes 40 years to grow a tree, so we want to make sure they have the best start in life. Moving on to the next step in the supply chain, we need to get our harvested logs moved to the mills. Informed by customer demand, we need to solve the complex logistics of moving over 20 forest products to more than 30 mills. Optimal routing helps us get the right truck in the right lane, and the right product to the right mill. The thickness of these lines shows how much anticipated volume we will be moving in the coming weeks. These are part of over 28,000 kilometers of road network that JDI managed, mostly made up of dirt roads. We also track the speed of the trucks moving on those roads as an indication of road condition. Let's take a closer look at that speed. Using GPS positions, we can look at this week's speed data and compare it to last week's and find a variance. Areas in green are performing well, with trucks moving at or greater than expected, while areas in red, trucks are moving slower and the roads may require maintenance. This green section in the middle is a good example of how targeted maintenance helped affect speeds. In early June, we saw road speeds decline in this area, but following grading, they increased again. We also move our forest products by rail, and keeping trains moving efficiently and safely is important to our three short-line railways. We're exploring Survey 123 as a solution for asset inspections. Using the offline form on our mobile phones, we can update existing assets, or collect new inspection records. So following along the supply chain, the forest products that we saw in the woods have now been delivered to our sawmills using truck or rail. And the next big challenge in the business is managing inventory. And things change so quickly in our sawmills that standard aerial imagery gets out of date. So we can fly a drone and quickly capture both 2D and 3D products like this ortho mosaic. And then using these products, we can calculate the volume of this chip pile. So as Heather gets this started, let me tell you why this is so important to us. In our operations, 
nothing goes to waste. The logs that were delivered to the sawmill are turned into lumber, and we collect up all of the residues, the bark, the chips, the sawdust, and the shavings to use in other processes. Always making sure that every part of the tree is used to its highest value. The chips from the sawmills are then brought to the pulp mill to be turned into paper and tissue products. And managing inventory at our sawmills, sorry, at our pulp mill, is measured in days and hours. So we really need to have a good estimate of how much inventory we have at our sites. Because running the mill out of chips is definitely not an option. And trying to estimate the volumes of these irregularly shaped piles can be quite a challenge because they're always in constant flux. So we just finished calculating the volume of this chip pile, which is more than 16,000 cubic meters, which is less than two days of supply at our pulp mill. Now that we've confirmed our inventory is at the right level, let's get the chips moving from the sawmill to the pulp mill. This real-time dashboard gives our dispatchers a complete view of the trucks that operate in Atlantic Canada to Ontario and beyond. We can see how many trucks are on the road, how many are in maintenance, and even if a driver is speeding. Moving on to the next part of our supply chain is the most important one, our customers. Looking at tissue sales across North America, we can see a gap, or as we call it, an opportunity. Using location analytics, we identify segments of the population that buy more tissue than the national average. By analyzing areas with similar demographics, we can flag candidate stores for growth. Our digital transformation doesn't stop at the supply chain. We're proud to be the major funding partner behind the largest white-tailed deer study in the Northeast because we want to know how wildlife are using our forest. Working with eight research partners across Canada in the US, we'll be tracking deer over the next five years using highly precise GPS collars. And then using location analytics, we can tell how this one deer traveled through the forest and what kind of habitat she preferred in both the summer and winter months. Our sustainability story goes beyond the research and the technology we showed you here today. We've been in business for over 130 years, and we grow more wood than we harvest to ensure that we will be here for another 130 and beyond. Our Unique Areas program is award-winning, protecting rare plants, wetlands, habitats, and the biodiversity that is so important to our ecosystem. We planted our first tree over 60 years ago, and this month, We'll be planting our one billionth tree, deepening our strong roots, and helping grow a sustainable future. Thank you. That's great. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Just, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Just one more thing before we go. In celebration of our billionth tree milestone, we'd love to present you with a wow. sister spruce seedling wow Look at to this. commemorate the event it's <laughs> great thank, thank you. you thank, thank you. you very much thank you. yeah great. i'll try to take care of it yeah, i'm sure you will does it grow in southern california they'll grow anywhere really they okay will. here we go <laughs> look the reason why i picked these guys this organization i would say is because they're committed to digital transformation the family behind this organization is committed. I mean, they're just an incredible company and have values. And you've seen how they're integrated in this concept of integrating environmental thinking into everything you do. So thank you for that. And I appreciate it. Good job. Mm -hmm.